right, so just between uh, Pimba and Roxby Downs, and uh, I've been asked the question if there's any trees or forest or anything like that out here. And I tried mentioning there's a few pine trees. Uh, there's quite a few. Every now and then it's, it gets pretty thick. Um, so yeah, there is trees out this way, and then there'll be sections where there's just nothing, just flat land. Contoured hills, no trees, low, sh low bushes and shrubs, um, and then trees again. <laughs> it cuts in and out. Just gonna head out, check on the hole, see how dry it is. That's what she's like. So I suppose you get an idea of how the land out is worked with the water, the dry, the water, the dry, and how we end up with this. Now, I'm not sure if you can get this for scale. I'll just put my foot right next to a crack. <laughs> Try not to lose my leg down it. So these are nice and flexible clay. making some earthenware bowls and make some money some cups as you can see it's very sticky and still very wet under there and um yeah nonetheless you can see the cracks opening up I'm trying i don't really want to step on if it's not that solid yeah i'm not going to risk it <laughs> it's a bit soft oh dear just all very fine silty sort of material that's uh, managed to wash its way back in and then pulled itself apart like cheesecake if you can't see him in, see inside mmm so yeah, yeah, it's definitely still slippery. That's dry surface, very wet underneath still. So I'm not going to attempt to do this uh, by hand at all. And um, until I can get a machine, we're still out of luck. Oh dear, 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 dear. Wheelbarrow load, you reckon that is?
I think I had this fellow a carton, at least. All right. So I've uh, had a bit of a smash around best I can with the hand tool. I wasn't planning on bringing the trailer out. I wasn't sure what was happening this trip. We've got about a day left. Okay, as promised, thought I'd just show you some of the other doublets that are finished up for Winston. Start at this end. I think these all turned out pretty fantastic. So we'll zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, some nice colour in that. It's got a couple of black lines in it. Sort of same as this one, but that's natural, it's not a break. Nice color, it's a bit opaque still. So I'm starting off not with the worst, but with the least brightest or least. <laughs> so I worked my way up. That one's not too bad though, I like the shape of that one. It's good salvage on some opal, it was very thin. That's how I got it too. So it's just a case of gluing it down and seeing what comes up. And it's got colour, it's not super strong. This one's nice. It's a little bit light on the colour, but it's got a really nice colour. All the spectrum in there. Quite a few of these actually like this, multicolored. Nice little ringstone, maybe. 
that little pendant. Very little pendant. So that's a bit striated. Running that way down the stone. <laughs> now this one's a nice little one. It's again with a banded colour through it. It's quite a bright little piece too. So that's a really nice one, especially that little orange flash there. That's gorgeous. With quite a bit of colour in this one. It's a nice high dome. <laughs> Got a fair bit of colour all over it, again multicoloured. This one I like as well. It's got quite a bit of colour in it. Reasonably bright. And this one. but not least it's a little triangle piece I think that came up quite well a little pendant stone and this one now this one had a few issues it's still got issues I think it's got some fractured fractured um, marks in it which I couldn't get out so some of those scratches are scratches and some of them are sort of a fracture in the stone I'm going to keep going back and polishing this one and see if I can somehow get it out there we go you can sort of see it there but it's a bit hard the more you go down the more it flecks that up there we go Yeah, you sort of see it there. Got some marks there, some up there, and they're not wheel marks either. Uh, the stone just wants to fall apart, I think. So I don't know how long that one will stay together, but <laughs> it was a nice stone too. Some nice blues in it, aqua green. Still on the stone, be good for a specimen collection piece. So anyway, that's those ones. Alright, so another thing <clears throat> that was happening this week, um, it's been happening for quite a while. As you've all seen, I put this on for a guard for the belt, just for safety. But if we look around here, you kind of see through there, you, yeah, someone might end up sticking their fingers down there. So we want that blocked in. So we wanted another shroud made up and we tried to get a fella to make one up. And uh, <laughs> okay. so we asked someone to make one up. We said we want it curved. We want access to the, uh, around the belt at the back of the pulley to hold on to so we can unscrew the faceplate. <laughs> and so they came up with this, which goes on the back of the 
shroud with the motor out here and we can't get into the belt to hold that or we unscrew the faceplate. <sighs> so we went and saw another fella. We said we wanted it rounded. We wanted that end blocked in and just wanted access to the belt. And so he comes up with this. Again, big boxy. Motor sits out there. We can access the wheel. But this just kind of looks ugly. So I thought, yeah, to heck with it. <laughs> Politely. I'll do it myself. Prototype anyway. Um, I just bent it once there, around there, around a coffee jar, around a broom handle there, and gave it some feet. And that sits perfect, nice and sleek. And oops, it goes around that way. If the belt comes off the motor, comes up around to the wheel. And that blocked in there quite nicely so that you couldn't stick your hand through, as I was saying before. And that's all we needed, something simple. Now, just to give you an idea, this cost $100 to be made up, and $40 if we wanted any more. This, <laughs> this is a, 135 if we wanted more made up 135 a piece <laughs> we can't charge that for a belt guard anyway so this cost me around about a ten dollar mark in plastic material and then just used the heat gun and a bit of ingenuity bent it round. was thinking about going with just doing it this way and figuring out how to make them up mass produced but we got a young fella doing our powder coating he's offered to attempt to do this in aluminium and powder coat them and he's had great success so that's yet to come to show but just to show you this is another thing that we've been up to of late been very busy it doesn't see much but to run around with plastic guys meet up organize and then get this over and over and then have to do it myself and anyway being a busy week people so yeah i haven't had a video out not that that should matter but anyway Alright, so I'll leave this video here. Sorry about the video. Um, as far as getting any one thing done. All over the place. <laughs> so yeah, there's a bit of a trip down to Mooka there. Before that, I'm in the middle of slicing up, cutting, and getting ready to do the treatment <laughs> still. Um, video uh, with the concrete and some hard matrix. And we'll do the, uh, the concrete all the way through to show through to the resin if needed just to show why it's needed and so forth. Um, also, I've got three rings and a pendant to make. Um, my apologies, I still haven't started the pendants. <laughs> but that's that resin chip one that I've got to set in a pendant yet. Uh, very busy week. Um, so I'm gonna get this done over Easter and hopefully get it done, um, as well as having Easter. So yeah, doublets and a Mooka trip, matrix treatment, silversmithing, Whatever else I can conjure up at the moment. Um, slowly getting it all out, playing catch up here. So bear with. <laughs> Hope you guys are having a happy Easter uh, or holidays. Um, and we're in school holidays here, so yay. No, it's all good for family time. But yeah, I'm gonna head off and get on with this matrix. So yeah, again, hope you enjoyed. Cheers.